Well, I've got a couple stuff set up. First, let's get ourselves introduced around here. Um, my name's oh. Nash. I do this stupid show, and I've also got over a decade's worth of experience in the IT industry to over here. This is uh, Mike Gearman. He is the producer here on Radio Dead Air, and he has just as much technical gizmometry under yeah. his belt as well. And even, even though there's some things I still haven't figured out about Windows 10. Yeah, but it, it, it's new, so. And uh, we'll be uh, talking some tech news tonight, and we'll also be going over some of your uh, your questions that you folks have sent in regarding your uh, your tech issues. So where do we get started? I think the the big news we're going to go with tonight is the story that broke. I think was it Thursday or Friday? Well, you'd have to tell me which story it was. It's well. Okay, if if you drive, oh, hmm, if you drive a Volkswagen that was made <laughs> in the year two thousand nine to twenty fifteen, and it's a diesel powered Volkswagen, you might be fucked. Well, it's not fucked, I'd say. It's but it certainly got issues. Oh no, fucked is is the term here. Okay, what happened? This is big, big news, if you weren't aware of this. What happened is Volkswagen was caught breaking the law. Yeah, I say, they're fucked. The people with the Volkswagen... We'll have to get, well, we'll have to, get to that. Um, they're going to get recalled. Yeah, and that's, that's where we're going to get into the problem of their being fucked. Okay, here's, here's what happened. Volkswagen has been releasing these diesel cars since 2009, and they've been winning awards for their high fuel efficiency and and lots of very and low emissions. Low emissions. Yeah, and low emissions. Yeah, that's kind of a key here too. Um, these include, I believe, uh, Jettas, Golfs, Audi A3s, uh, Beetle convertibles, and Passats. These were all doing yeah. so well. And it turns it's like, it's, like, it's like half a million cars total, I think. Five, yeah, close to five hundred thousand cars, and it finally, it, uh, um, an independent group um, did some research to find out why these cars were doing so well, and it turns out cheating. Yeah, they were actually doing so well. See. There's an emissions test that a lot of states have in place, California being one of them. You're in oh, California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, emission tests are when you take your car into a shop, it has to be hooked up to a machine that registers how much of certain gases are being released by the car. In this case, uh, nitrous oxide uh, was one that was considered, that's, that's the acid rain chemical. Yeah. Nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide are the big ones. Yeah. And um, it turns out Volkswagen had fiddled with the computers in their cars, the firmware that was built into the computers, so that when the Volkswagens were in for their mandated, either some places do federal, some places do state, but they have these emission tests. When the cars were hooked up to the emission testers, they emitted much lower, the, the, the cars set themselves up to emit lower emissions. When they were disconnected and they were on the road, the emissions, and this is a quote from the article, which came, this, this report on a lot of places, New York Times reported on it. Oh yeah, well it's huge news. 10 to 40 times the regulated emissions. 10 to 40. So let me explain uh, just for a couple of people here the way the, the emissions test sort of works. You drive your car into a shop that's been certified to run these tests. Uh, most of them are hole-in-the-wall places. You drive up. This is all they do is these tests. Occasionally, you'll find one that fixes stuff that has gone, oh, this is wrong. You, you failed the test. We know why. We'll fix that. Right. Uh, and the newer car, older car, older style cars, all they do is they shove a sensor up the tailpipe. <laughs> that... The newer style cars, they hook things up to various places. They, right. you know, they can hook up to the chips effectively in the, in the motor and still shove something up the tailpipe. This is so they can you know, more accurately state the car was going at this speed or this engine level or whatever. Now, Volkswagen figured out that 
And they, they do this a lot with even newer cars. Cars is going back as far as like the 90s. They have these little plug-in doohickeys that the computer reads all the information that comes out of the computer um, inside of your car, the firmware in it. And Volkswagen had essentially built into, this was not hacking, this was not aftermarket, this came from Volkswagen itself. They had essentially built a way to violate the emissions rules. Yeah, and it, it was it was actually, in, in certain ways, a little clever, because it wasn't just, oh, they've hooked something up to the, the port on the car where you can, uh, mm -hmm. for example, I can, it's the same port I can hook things up to to go, why is my check engine light on? Yeah. And it's, it's that sort of thing. So they could hook, hook uh, but their, their stuff was saying, well, we have seat sensors. We have steering controls, steering wheel sensors to say what position the steering wheel is in and go, oh, yeah, there's nobody in the fucking car right now. They must be doing an emissions test. That was some sneaky ass shit. This was not just, you know, a little oopsie. This was complicated. Yeah, it's, it's not something they can point to and go, uh, this was a mistake. The, we, we, we put a, a, a lesser than sign where we meant a greater than sign in certain places and no. it, it just screwed no. things up. No, this is, this is, there's no way. The EPA, the EPA actually sat down with Volkswagen administrators and got them to admit, yep, we done did this. Yep. How serious is this? According to the, a lot of a lot of papers, uh, newspapers, and other media outlets have quoted this number, and it could be wrong, but I've looked it up. I looked at the statute. I looked at the fines. Uh, I'm going to go billions of dollars. The fine is thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars per vehicle sold. We're talking close to half a million vehicles. Eighteen billion dollars. Eight. Eighteen billion dollars, or one point eight Snapchats. We'll get to that story in a second. I think I missed that one. Yeah. Um. Eighteen billion dollars. Potentially, Volkswagen could be on the hook for the GDP of a small nation is what we're talking here. I'm wondering what their profit was last year. I mean, it's, 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 it's I don't think it'll, it won't bankrupt them, but. Now, when, when I said earlier that this is going to fuck anyone who drives these cars, here's why. In order to pass emission standards fairly, these cars are going to have to be reprogrammed, which means that they're not going to be as efficient on the road as they used to be. In order to pass emission standards, they're going to have to sacrifice power and mileage. Yep. Yeah. So if you're driving one of these cars, you're going to legally have to take it in, get it fixed by putting proper corrected firmware on the car's computer, and then your car is going to drive like shit. Which means on top of the 18 billion, that's billion with a B. Which on, is about two years profit for the shareholder profit for them. On top of the 18 billion that Volkswagen's already potentially on the hook for, there's going to be civil lawsuits from oh, God, Volkswagen yes. owners. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the nicest thing... The nicest thing that would happen is they go, okay, we'll just buy the Volkswagens back. Here's all the money you gave us. Buy a new car somewhere else. But I don't expect that no. to happen. No. Um, it, it, the, the, the feasibility of Volkswagen buying back 500,000 cars from dealers and consumers is yeah. just not possible. It's nope. it's It's... They, they they could not front that much cash at one time. So they would have to probably buy, offer a reduced rate, offer a trade-in value or something like that, some kind of way that's not going to live up to what Volkswagen has cost the owners of these vehicles, which means lawsuits. Lawsuits. This is going to, this could potentially be one of the biggest class action lawsuits 
of the 21st century. Oh, yeah. Well, 500,000 people. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be, they'll be oh, easily 20% of those won't opt into the lawsuit preferring to sue individually. Mm hmm. Um, part of it will, of course, depend on what kind of. Uh, I'll see, I, don't, I know how software companies, you know, a lot of companies will say, oh, we have an uh, uh, end user license that says you have to go to arbitration. I don't know if that applies to, to vehicles. <laughs> Especially not vehicles who broke the uh, vehicle making company that broke the law. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to watch. And what's now? This is just uh, the fines we're talking about here are just in America. Now, when you take the European Union into consideration, two factors there. Number one, Volkswagen is a European company, and European regulations are much more stringent than they oh, are God, in the yes. U.S. And two, the majority of diesel is a much bigger deal in Europe than it is in America. Over here, we tend to use a lot of unleaded vehicles. Our commercial vehicles tend to be diesel, but uh, private vehicles, um, the majority of them are unleaded. In Europe, there's a lot more diesel usage, which means a lot more of these vehicles could potentially be on the road over there. Yeah, they could be well, that. That could be the business where the business ending fines happen. I don't think they. I don't think they run Volkswagen out of business. But I. You don't because combined with America and the European Union, do you really I, see Volkswagen I, being able to survive this? I think they probably have enough money in the bank. Reputation wise, though. Oh, reputation wise, they're gonna. It's gonna be a decade before they recover. And Unless they fire all the executives that were responsible, or someone goes to jail, that'd be nice. I don't. That that's the sad thing. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing someone go to jail over this, which is horrific. Well, if if it's not a criminal offense anymore, I mean, it it could be. It could rise to criminal levels of fraud in some nations. Or uh, yeah. at, at eighteen billion fines. I don't think that that could potentially classify as criminal here in America? No, not necessarily, because it's individual cases. It's 18 billion, indivi 500,000 individual cases. People in the channel are mentioning the potential of, uh, of Volkswagen nationalizing. That may end up happening. Because look at, all GM did, all GM did was fail business-wise. And we bought them out. They've restructured and paid that most of that back, though, haven't they? Yeah. But we talk about, you know, Volkswagen here has violated the law. That's a much bigger deal than just a business failure, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, what do we have next? Well, I mentioned Snapchat, and this is did. this is kind of one of those quiet things that no one really has been kind of talking about. But um, I was reading an article that uh, Beth Elderkin sent me. Uh, she's uh, one of the other contributors on Channel Awesome. Does some other stuff elsewhere. Good producer. Okay. And she sent us. She sent. She tweeted this story about Snapchat and. It's about Snapchat's lets users replay snaps. And that, that, that seems kind of innocuous. What Snapchat's going to be doing is uh, charging people a dollar. And okay. if they like, they can go up to and rewatch or review a deleted snap up to three times. Which is kind of weird and against the whole principle of Snapchat, which is, you know, you make a picture and you it, it's, it's gone. Did you send me the link to this story yet? I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll send it on over to you. But... I only asked because something on my computer beeped and I thought that was it, but I no. can't find anything. Here you go. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the bit that caught my eye was near the bottom. Now, already this, this is, seems weird. It's like Snapchat's flailing around and trying to, to find a way to make money. Read that uh, line. Okay, well, I'll read it. Um, Snapchat. Okay, I got it. Uh, seeking ways to generate revenue as there as its valuation skyrockets. So it's they're saying it's worth a lot of money, but it has no money coming in. Mm -hmm. Is what? How I read that sentence. Uh, rolling out ads on the app. Okay, whatever. 
uh, was in talks with Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba. Alibaba on a funding round that would value the company at ten billion. Okay. Snapchat is value is is potentially in this next funding round. They're valuing the company at ten billion dollars. Nash, we need to come up with something like Snapchat. We really do. I, I, I'd like to have $10 billion. I don't know about you. I'm going to point out that the purchase price of YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram combined is less than what Snapchat is being valued at. Wait, YouTube is less than $10 billion? $1.68 billion. Google okay. bought YouTube for $1.68 billion. Amazon bought Twitch for around just under just over nine hundred thousand dollars, and Instagram was one point two billion by Facebook. Well, I gotta think. I gotta think that YouTube's worth more than that now. It may be, but I'm just talking about the valuations. And here's the problem: all of these things are pointing to of decided. These are all warning signs of a bubble in the economy. All okay. of these, this, there is no way Snapchat is worth 10 billion. Valuing it at such is inflating its price on the market. And as you just re read earlier, Snapchat is seeking more ways to generate revenue. It's not bringing in anywhere near the profit to justify a $10 billion valuation. Well, you know what? If someone spends $10 billion on it, I think the people who, who currently own it would take that money, run, and uh, spend wildly as they, in a, in a frenzy of uh, materialism and drugs. Uh, and quickly, it would, that would be the only time we see trickle-down economics actually work. <laughs> Obsidian in the channel is pointing out that Disney paid $4 billion for Marvel. Yeah, no, Snapchat, no. I mean, unless, okay, the only way I could see uh, Alibaba saying this is worth 10 billion is if uh, they say, this is a great way for us to infect millions upon millions of American computers with spyware for our Chinese military masters. Sony bought MGM for two billion, and you're expecting us to believe that this this is the side. This is exactly what happened in the housing bubble. Well, Where, yeah, the the first Silicon Valley bubble. The the dot com bubble. That's another good one. See, back in the early days of the um, commercial internet, when the uh, the average person was finally allowed onto it, and you had. CompuServe and AOL and all these other things that allowed people to have access to the internet for the first time. There was this, this gold rush to get to the internet and set things up and make money somehow. People would go on and make these websites and be like, it's worth all this. And no one really had business models or ways to bring in profit or just all of these, it's worth this much. Look up pets.com sometime. Oh God, yeah. That was the pinnacle of the dot-com bubble. It was very similar to the Snapchat thingy over here. And it, it's, oh, apparently Disney bought Lucasfilm for four billion. So apparently Snapchat is worth more than Marvel and Lucasfilm Combined? No. No! And th this is dangerous. This is seriously dangerous. This is... W what's happening in the tech world is a lot like what happened in the dot-com era. People will come up with an idea. And they will rush to market with this idea. And, like, th they'll make an app. They'll put something out there. It could be a really bad idea. Or sometimes maybe it's even a really good one, but they have no business plan. They have no way to market it for profit. They have no way to do anything with it. They just shoot it out there. They shine it up. They polish it. They make it look fantastic. And then they wait for a larger company to buy them out.
or to be another round of, of angel investors or, or yeah. venture capital. Just get money in. And if they get the wrong business guy, their company goes under. Yeah, or or they they uh, they open to IPO and they get it they get stock and they sell stock in this company, even though. Yeah, slightly obscure reference. They get a business of Wana. <laughs> I don't know that one. Uh, there's a web comic called uh, uh, what is it? It's a three panel comic or something like that. I can't remember the exact name. Anyway, there was a four series trip where the, a company went under because they hired as their business person a, an iguana in a suit. It's about this tall standing on a table, never moved, never did anything. Eh. That's a, you know what? That would probably be a better idea than a lot of some of the stuff that's happened lately. This that's is, this is kind of dangerous in terms of, of the tech. In fact, there is a crash coming and people don't want to talk about this. People don't, don't use the term, um, bubble. They don't want to say tech sector bubble. They just, they don't want to acknowledge it, but there is. We have these wildly inflated, inflated valuations of all of these different corporate, all these different companies who have these like Snapchat that aren't even profitable, but are yeah. valued incredibly highly. Well, I think the reason I think they're they're valued like that, and again, uh, I've never taken a business course, so this is possibly me pulling stuff out of my ass, is they look at how much penetration it has mm. as they go. This this has a lot of penetration. So things we can do with it will theoretically have that same penetration. So when they throw ads up on it, they're going, a lot of people are seeing these ads. How many are clicking through? Probably not many. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be like if someone started a brand new, well, excuse me, it's like on uh, Netflix. Doesn't Netflix do commercials? Nope. Okay, is it Hulu that does commercials? Yes. Okay, so Hulu does commercials, but they also now have a, uh, commercial free version yeah. of Hulu, you yeah. pay a few extra dollars. So what happened there is some business person obviously looked and said, okay, we get this much money in from commercials. If we offer a commercial free version, we will have a certain percentage of our, our base take advantage of that. And it'll offset the amount we lose from charging for commercials or more than offset it. So they're looking at, they're valuing uh, uh, Snapchat based off of it's got this much penetration. We can throw up this much. We guess this percentage of people will actually use that function. Huzzah, but here's money. here's the problem with that, though. By the time they get around to figuring out how to actually monetize it, the people who created the service have gone. sold it. They're gone. It's not their problem. And this is dangerous because instead of building these companies around these ideas, like coming up with something and growing it like Google did, like Apple did, like all these companies that actually, you know, created something did. We have companies that come in with the idea, sell the idea and run. The idea of growing a company larger is not the end goal. That's not the basis of an economy. That's the basis of a scheme. Yeah. That's why we're headed toward a very significant economic problem ahead. Well, maybe it depends on on who loses money on this. I mean, if it's if it's someone, I guarantee you, San Francisco will all but collapse. Eh, no, because Google's there, and they they'll still have plenty of stuff. Um, it does. There's, there's plenty of companies there that have have actual products that won't collapse. Uh, there, there, there will be an adjustment, and I, I know people who live up there who will quite happily see this adjustment because it means real estate prices might we'll come down a little bit. We'll plummet! Oh my, San oh, Francisco no, 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 has something. They won't plummet. They'll drop 20 to 30 percent. Considering how much, um, I heard the cost of uh, a, uh, an apartment, someone I know has got an apartment in, in Frisco, and they're not even in Frisco proper. They're kind of outside of it. One bedroom, 2000 a month. Yeah, uh, I saw an article on I think Ars Technica, it was some site where you people were renting in Frisco proper. Basically, they got a bed and a little bit of space in a room, and it was seventeen hundred a month. Yeah, so even thirty percent off of that—that's a lot. That is a plummet. Depends. We're talking I know people who, who own real estate there and uh, are making bank off of renting out rooms. So. In any event, this is considering how much of our uh, the American economy right now is dealing with tech sector, tech investment, and all of this. 
This is dangerous. This is not good, and it's not sustainable. Speaking of one more thing for the news tonight. Okay, what do we got? Um, that's not good, not sustainable. Um, this week, the entire interwebs lost their shit, apparently, because all of a sudden, Vox Media and uh, ours and The All and a bunch of other different uh, websites started writing articles about ad blocking. You know, that thing that's been around for the better part of a decade. I'm guessing uh, against ad blocking. Yeah, and it was really weird how all of them suddenly, at about the exact same time, suddenly real, suddenly decided to print these um, the ad, the, the headline here, the super hyperbolic, hyperbolic headline here is Welcome to Hell, Apple versus Google versus Facebook and the slow death of the web. From That's from The Verge. So now whether the, the, the thing that happened here, whether you agree with ad blocking or not, whether you think it's good to help prevent tracking and other nasty things that ads have been known to do, or whether you think that ad blocking contributes to, to, is, is important to keeping the free web alive, that is strangely not what this is actually all about. Okay. What happened this week was iOS 9 was released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And includes uh, ad blocking stuff built in, content blocking built in. Yes. Now, media companies like The Verge and Vox and All and, and tons and tons of others, what has happened over the past decade since the iPhone and, and that is that Apple products, specifically Apple mobile products, which are all powered by iOS, have become a bit of a favorite in in uh in, in the tech circles in well not just tech in new media everybody's got an iphone everybody's got an ipad and not only have, is it i have an iphone well not only is it a preference for well, a lot it's, of it's people a work iPhone. well in this case not not even is it a preference for some people it's also a status symbol in these circles. They they've got the newest iPhone. Oh yeah. They've got their 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 Apple Watch and whoever can break the the newest news on Apple first wins yeah. of course, you know. Even if this occasionally gets a little shady like someone, "Oh look, they left a prototype behind in a bar. I will take this and report on it." And now all of a sudden, Apple who they've they've given so much free promotion to, so many stories, so much coverage, now Apple is letting people block ads, which is the basis of a lot of these new media companies. They, they are entirely based. And again, whether you agree with it or not, this isn't about that. This is about new media is, they're like, why do you do this to me? The thing we like just slapped us upside the face. Yes. Which is hilarious and to me because if you've been paying attention to Apple in the past 30 years at all, yeah, sort of, this is what Apple does. If you were in the education system and got Apple computers, Apple really kind of screwed them in the long run. Um, if you happen to have uh, been well, based well, to be to be fair. A lot of the people in the education system who are using Apple had never used computers before, so. Yeah. Uh, if you're based around a Macintosh Pro, the Mac Pro, who are you used to getting fucked? If you were a video editor in one of the many professional video houses that used Final Cut Pro, oh, you got fucked, you got fucked two years ago and they never unfucked you. Never unfucked you. If you're in the music industry, iTunes is strangling you, and you have no choice but to roll over and take it. Unless you're Taylor Swift. This is what Apple does. A 
Apple doesn't do things based on anything except what's good for Apple. Apple noticed consumers have been blocking ads. Apple's gives, Apple gives consumers what they want. Apple gave com consumers this option on their devices. That's what happened. And now all of these new media companies who have for years crowed about the death of old print media and use the tagline adapt or die. That has been, that's, that's, that's <laughs> true. It has been their tagline adapt or die. You have to adapt to the new world. Suddenly Apple does something that's forcing them to figure out how to adapt and the sky is falling. And you know what? That shit is delicious. <laughs> no, you're enjoying this a little bit too much. Nash. I am. You know why? Why is that? Last week when Apple had its big event to reveal all the new Apple products for the year, which really wasn't that impressive. The Verge, this this exact same site right now, The Verge of 35 articles on The Verge's front page. 32 of them were Apple, weren't 29. they? 29. 29 front page articles were Apple related. 29 of and not, 34. And not even, if I remember, it wasn't even 29 separate things. It was, no. Here's, here's a facet of this thing. Here's another facet of this thing. Here's a third facet of this same thing. Yeah, there was one that, there was one talking about the fact that now the iPhone comes in rose gold. And then there was a separate story with a separate headline that said, hey, would you like to get the iPhone in rose gold? You have to buy a new iPhone. These were two separate stories? Really? Yeah, it should have, uh, the iPhone comes in rose gold. It should have been a paragraph in how you get the iPhone in rose gold. And that, that was, but, so yeah, all, the, I, I'm taking this with about a grain of salt here. Because for years, you supported Apple, you advertised Apple, you gave Apple glowing reviews and passes on bad ideas. You pretty much rolled over and showed your stomach to Apple. And Apple is now biting you. And you know what? If you'd maybe been a little more critical in your articles about Apple, if you'd maybe talked about their business practices, if you'd maybe helped rein them in, in the public just a little bit, maybe they wouldn't have gotten so big that the idea of iOS 9 with ad blocking could scare you this bad. But you didn't. Welcome to Adapt or Die, just like the rest of us. So, yeah. In Soviet Russia, Apple bites you! Ah, <laughs> uh, Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> I guarantee you half the people in the channel don't know who Yakov Smirnov is. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? That's probably a good thing. Even though we do... It's good that they don't know. Let that little tidbit die, shall we? I like Yakov Smirnov. Okay, we have any other news? Uh, well, I think that's all. We've got we've got questions. Okay. Oh, we've got an oh, uh, we've got one of those annoying ones to start off with. Not that your questions annoy us, folks. It's just one of those little niggling annoying. And you're, I know already the first question, this guy's not going to like the answer I have for him. He's really not. Okay. Um, Which one are we doing first? Uh, it's from John uh, Golly. Or, I do like John, by the way. Uh, I'm going to say I really do like your signature line. Yes. <laughs> That was a good one. So what if Jesus turned water into wine? I once turned the entire stewed load into vodka. Your move, Jesus. That's a good, that's a good line. All right. So here's his question. I've had a problem that's been happening for a while on my Windows 7 desktop, and it's slowly driving me bananas. Whenever my computer undergoes a consistent amount of pressure, ranging from rendering, exporting projects, to simply transferring a large amount of data across hard drives, 80% of the time, my taskbar experiences a graphics glitch. The actual graphics bar disappears, but the text of what my icons are remain visible in a state they no longer respond to mouse clicks and scrolling through folders while the Alt-Tab key just gives me blank windows. I recover this by stopping explorer.exe and starting it up again, but sometimes this brings up a new problem. 
Whenever I try and open up any folder after this, it refuses to do so and just gives me the error, quote, repo, remote, yeah, remote, call proce remote procedure call failed and did not execute. I've tried going into services.msc and rebooting the RPS locator process to no avail. So John obviously knows what's going on here. Well, he knows how to handle it. Scanned for malware and viruses multiple times and nothing has been found that seems to fix the problem. Restarting helps or solves the problem, but I really want to avoid having to restart every time this happens or to just not have the problem happen in the first place. It's really annoying and I appreciate your system solving either or both of these problems. Okay. Huh. I have very bad news here. I have good news and bad news. Which should we start with? Let's start with the good news. The good news is I do not believe this is a hardware-based problem. My gut is telling me, especially uh, that it's a consistent when there's activity or something going on. I do not believe you have a hardware based problem. So that is very good news. It means you won't actually have to spend any money to fix anything. But the bad news is I believe something somewhere in the guts of Windows 7 is hosed. And this is one of the... <laughs> This is this is one of the annoying problems about Windows. It's it's frustrating, especially for longtime Windows users. I believe there's a DLL or a registry entry or something going on in there that's just wrong. goofed up. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing the bad news is you're about to suggest backing up all this data and doing a, fra a clean install. Clean install, because unfortunately. If I had three days and time enough to go through every single line of all your shit and cross-reference with some Google searches and look in your error logs and your event menu viewer, I might be able to come up with a solution here. Unfortunately, Windows is so complex and so full of yeah. stuff that the best solution I could offer and probably that your local repair shop could offer would be the clean install. Wipe it and start over. Yeah, where I was going to, it was very similar, was uh, if uh, you had someone who was basically the same patch level as you, because I'm assuming you're running your Windows patches. That's just a base assumption I have. Uh, maybe you're not because one of them interferes with something else you're doing. Um, is if you had something that could uh, produce a diagnostic report on all the DLLs in your Windows system folders. You know, version, si you know, size, version, etc. Last modified date, and that you could compare to someone else. That maybe, maybe slim chance you could find track down something in that. And that's, uh, but uh, the baselining tools uh, for that are not cheap. Uh, well, there might be a cheap one out there. I don't know about the cheap ones because of where I work. Mm -hmm. Because we're buying them for domain level stuff with hundreds of computers mm -hmm. on them. Uh, uh, there may be some scripts you could do that would do the same thing. But again, it's a case of find someone who has a similar enough computer that you can match things up and maybe figure it out. You might be spending just as much time as backing up your data and doing a clean install. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Pro it, it's it's a matter of how much time do you want to spend trying to to fix this versus how much time do you want to get actually back up and running and in terms of of time down versus it's usually better to start over because it would take less time to start over and rebuild than it would to yeah uh it's frustrating i know um uh, what, what I will also say is, uh, you said this happens when you have about an 80% load. The only thing I can think of a uh, hardware-wise is, you know, you say 80% load, is that CPU, is that memory? Because Windows will report out an 80% memory load, and that's actually significantly more memory than you probably have on your computer, because it counts the swap file in there as well. Mm -hmm. So if your disk is, if your disk with your swap file is really full, or your swap file is, would be located is really full, it's doing a lot of paging, and it might be paging out and paging back in certain things that it probably shouldn't be. So uh, just something you might try is if you have space on the, the drive where it says where the page file is, 
one, clear some extra space out. Set your page file to a fixed size. Uh, some people don't suggest this for Windows 7, but it does work okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, minimum twice as much uh, RAM as you have. Generally, no more than four times as much RAM as you have. Realistically, it's not going to matter if you've got more than uh, four gigs of RAM, then just set to four gigs of page size because Windows 7, well, no, if you're not winning, running Windows 7 64 bit, then it does matter. Uh, you can have more than that. But yeah, see if you can set your page file size to a significantly high amount and see if that helps any. It's it's a slim chance, but it's better than, you know, it's, it's a 10 minute one reboot fix that you can test out rather than doing a full rebuild. Hmm. Okay. Worth uh, a shot. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it might cut down on the time, but yeah, my gut is saying you can have to, hey, try, try it if it works. I mean, simple as that. Yeah. All right, Travis has uh, his next question. Here is, um, I have an HP NV laptop running Windows 8.1, and every so often the wireless adapter stops working. It seems to completely disappear from the list of, of devices. Uh, when that happens, obviously I cannot connect to Wi-Fi, and when using the troubleshooting program, the program just suggests putting a network cable to my laptop. Sometimes happens when updates go on, and I when I use System Restore, the device comes back. What is going on and how like, can I prevent this? Um, you may be experiencing a driver issue. Yeah, that's that's driver one issue option awesome. there. Uh, I haven't played with any HP Envies. I don't know reviews on them. No. Uh, I have run into cases, just random stuff. Is that a built-in Wi-Fi? If it's built in, it sounds like, the, yeah. it sounds like there's, a, there's a slim possibility that what, however the the chip is in there is seated incorrectly and you know just random use as it heats up will you know become unseated when things contract as things cool down it goes oh there's something here uh, i hope it's not that because that's a real pain in the ass to fix uh, your obvious short-term fix is to get an external thing you just plug into usb and go oh i've got wi-fi on a usb stick uh, you probably don't want to do that. Yeah, it's not nearly, especially considering we're talking an AC wireless card here. That's way oh, yeah. faster than USB. Um, the first thing I would recommend, since you don't specify which model of HP Envy we're talking here, I'd recommend going to Intel's website and getting the AC7260 driver. I have a similar card to this in my laptop. Um, and get it directly from Intel. Because theirs tend to be a little more up to date than what you'll find on HP's site. Um, try that. Install the new drivers and see if it behaves. I've actually, I, I like I said, I have the same one. The one, the drivers that Windows put on there were kind of flaky and kind of a pain in the butt because for some reason Microsoft was using earlier drivers. But when I used the one straight from Intel, the card started behaving and I was, you know, much easier. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, I definitely go that route first. Yeah. If that doesn't work, you may actually, sadly, have a failing uh, PCIe card. They can fail. This does happen. Um, you can replace it, but you will have to look up. And like I said, since I don't have the exact model of HP Envy you have here, um, the PCIe cards tend to be fairly standardized, especially if you just search. If you actually go on on Amazon and search for PCIe um, AC7260, you'll likely find a part-for-part part replacement fairly cheap, under 20 bucks. Yeah. It's just a matter of finding out which panel to unscrew. They, so they, take it out. Yeah, they pop in just like um, uh, sodium RAM for, uh, for laptops. Well, in that case, I didn't know, I didn't know how it popped in on that one. Oh, yeah. You might... Check the, the the panel. You know, again, look in your troubleshooting documents or whatever's online, and take the one you have, remove it, reseat it. See if your problem goes away then. Yeah, that's absolutely. Try just try taking it out, putting it back in first. Obviously, power your computer off. <laughs> I have to say that because I've known people who have not powered their computers off when taking parts out. When you're working with a server that says hot swappable, this is fine. When you're working with other things that do not say hot swappable, this is bad. Normally, a general rule is if you're going to be fucking with your computer, you're taking things out or putting things in your computer, shut the motherfucker off. Yeah. I shut, shut it off. Unless it's a hot swappable server component, which 
I've, I've done that before. I had a server that was failing. Um, yeah. Well, uh, due to where the server was, they were doing construction literally 60 yards away, which included driving three-story iron pilings down into the ground to keep the soil from subsiding because they were building on the beach. It was, it was construction. It was a city construction on the beach. So when the hard drive started failing, because of course there's all this vibration going on, uh, they said, okay, we're going to replace the hard drives. And I said, let's see how long they're going to be doing this construction. I don't want to replace hard drives just to have them fail again. And so by the time they finished the construction, our new hard drives had come in, which were, you know, four times as big. So I replaced one at a time and let it rebuild the raid array. Oh, it's done with that drive. Next drive. Now. Next drive. One a day for five days. But you can't do that with everything. Yeah, no, no. No, no. Um, <clears throat> in any event, yeah, uh, try the new drivers from Intel. Look, look those up. on Get, get them straight from Intel's site. That's worked for me. So like I said, I have a similar card. Same issues. If that doesn't work, try reseeding it. You'll have to look up specifically for your specific model of laptop. You didn't give it here, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, try reseeding the card. And if that doesn't work, try replacing it. But fortunately, at around 20 or under, it's a relatively cheap fix. So it's a simple thing. It's not very difficult. It's not much harder than installing new RAM. So you, you might be able to pull that off. And turn it the fuck off first. Yes. <laughs> Our next bit comes from uh, Renias. Uh, she says, I, I think it's a she. I don't know. Renias. I can't tell. Maybe. I, I don't know. Before. I'm sorry. Um, it might be he, might be a she. I don't know. Either way, we love you here. Uh, at the moment, I'm still running Windows 7 on both my desktop PCs. Is it worth upgrading to Windows 10 knowing that people are having driver's issues? Um, I upgraded last night, and I'm, other than visual annoyances where i don't like the the flatness of of things where you know they the, the bar is flat the, yeah the uh i've not had any problems window blinds i'm also not running window blinds you'll love window blinds okay uh, other than that i'm not having any driver issues but i don't have a lot of exotic equipment hooked up to this computer yeah. that's that's that the, tends... the more standardized equipment you have the more likely there are to drivers you, you've got a you've got a canon printer you've got you know well-known name brand stuff it's gonna you're not gonna generally have driver issues unless your stuff is old enough that they've decided uh, we're not making windows 10 drivers for it but even then windows 8 drivers might work yeah a good question you ask yourself here is am i using a video capture card or am i using um a sound card that's not built into the motherboard or any sort of exotic kind of internals that you have in there that's not found in, in See, normal systems I, I remember when sound cards built into the motherboard were exotic. I know. Um, my own personal problem, I'm using a uh, uh, Sound Blaster, what version is that? Uh, I think it's a, it's a Z or, or X-Fi, Sound Blaster X-Fi. And I use it for my show, it's very important, and that's why I'm kind of reluctant to upgrade because I need to see if, if we can get... I can't rely on creative to get the drivers the fuck right. I have to rely wait till someone releases a fix who's not, you know, a fan-made driver fix. That, that's how, uh. but the hardware's so good. Anyway, um, basically, I would go through, take stock. If you just have a regular desktop, if you got maybe an AMD or an NVIDIA graphics card and you don't use anything really strange inside, external devices, don't worry about it. The, the, you'll pretty much have, find a decent driver for most of your external stuff. It's when you have weird cards, like for example, I've got a Blackmagic capture card that I use for my camcorder here for, you know, that's how you can see me. Yeah. Or or my, uh, my X-Fi or any, anything like that. Then you might want to start doing some digging and see if anyone else is having problems with those devices. Yeah, I have heard people, I've got friends in line that had problems with Windows 10 installs. Because you're going to, if you know enough people, you're going to know someone who had a problem. No. Um, but it has gone relatively smoothly, smoothly for quite a lot of people. Relatively smoothly? Smoothly, yeah. Smoothie. <laughs> relatively smoothie. smoothie. Uh, yes. You get an upgrade and you get a banana strawberry smoothie. It's all good. It's lovely. Everybody loves it. So, yeah. yeah. If they give out smoothie coupons with Windows 10, that'd be great. 
it, it's really it's 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 not a one size fits all is what I'm saying. And if yeah, but if generally if you aren't using anything too weird on your system, uh, you should be OK. Um, yeah, I've checked out a number of the games I have on my computer. They're all working fine. Yeah. Uh, everything seems to be uh, the only the only difficulty or issue that I have is I personally think the Windows Defender firewall is very slow in its responses on things. Uh, web pages to me seem to be loading slower than they mm. were under my previous firewall. Which have you tried open. it with Edge? No. See if things load faster on Edge. Just call it a hunch. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm considering replacing the firewall with something else that I've tried before and going, oh, look, speed increase. Funny that. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, to go back, I've been watching the channel. Uh, they, uh, there's a system file checker, uh, and there's a support link, which I'm going to blast to you, and I suppose we can respond to, uh, just give it to you, Nash, uh, for a, a system file checker for, yeah. uh, there's a, there's a Windows system file checker, uh, for the person who's having problems with, uh, uh, Explorer. And this, I, I'd forgotten this thing existed because I'm not allowed to use it at work. It might work. It's a simple, it's a simple little application you run. It may be able to, to, to sort it. Yeah. But. And, and it's worth a shot. I mean, it, it's one of those things where it's, it may take an hour or so to run. Uh, there's instructions on how to run it there. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if it works great, your problem is solved. If not, hey, you know, you, you lost an hour or so checking. I've just had enough runarounds with with Windows to know that normally the best solution is wipe it, start over. Yeah, yeah. Next one comes from oh god, I can never say these names. Uh, Unasis, did I say that right? I don't know. Let me look. Unasis, Unasis. I I honestly have no yeah. idea. The last name, yeah. I, and, I, and I apologize Nunya. for this if this is your real last name, but it's Nunya. <laughs> And I, it, it's, it, it comes across as none your business. Yeah. And that, that, if it's real, I apologize. If it, it's one of those things, it looks, it looks fake. You look at it, you go, that looks fake. The question is, I'm an internet filmmaker and I use any video converter, free version to convert files. It's not working anymore. I was wondering if you point me at to better software. Um, yes, but it's not free. And I really got to say, when it comes to uh, Unasis, okay, thank you. Um, when it comes to uh, this sort of stuff, you are kind of better off spending maybe 14, 15 bucks to get something that's going to work in the long run. Um, I know, I know it's frustrating and I know you don't like, I trust me, I hate having to spend any damn money. I'm like, I already got this. Why do I have to get this? Um, yeah, but 15 bucks, not that much. Really. And I will yeah. tell you, this software has served me well for going on six years now. It's from a company called Wondershare. Wondershare Video Converter Ultimate. This thing, it, it, it whatever it is, it, it will convert video to audio. It will convert video to video. It does just about any damn format. The only thing I don't think it does yet is um, MP5 or MKV5 or H, what is it? X two six X two sixty five. Yeah, that's it. Two sixty five or two sixty four. Two sixty five. That's the new okay. one. That's the only one. It doesn't do X two sixty five yet. But they weren't asking about that, so yeah. It, but it does just about here. I'll, I'll let you see a picture of it over here. On the, I'll put it on the thing. There you go. That that that's what it is. Uh, Windows. Windows. Uh, it's v Wondershare Video Converter Ultimate. It's it's worked for, and they update it fairly regularly. It's good software. It's worked for me over the years. I've never had any real problems with it. Pretty much, and also it can use um, CUDA cores. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it can uh, use CUDA to accelerate conversion. It's been very helpful. It, it just does about any file format I can think of, and a lot of different settings on it. You can set the uh, bit rate. The uh, audio, all of it, to make the file bigger or smaller, d depending on uh, what you need. So that's that's the one I would recommend because when when I have problems with with Premiere and whatnot, I normally just go to that. It's fast, it's easy, and it gets the shit done. Okay, one, and, and that's what matters. Yeah, 
One last one tonight. Uh, Jonathan Lewis asks us, I'd like to start streaming games, but the internet in my home is slow. I use a wired connection to my router. I was wondering if getting an expensive router is worthwhile if I'm unable to upgrade my internet service. Well, getting the expensive... It's definitely more your field than mine. Yeah, getting the expensive router is is pretty much... Okay. Your home router has going always going to have far more bandwidth of it, unless you have something like Google Fiber, and even then it's going to be pushing it. Your home router is going to have way more bandwidth available to it than you're going to be able to get from your broadband provider. Um, because they're bastards. Oh, well, yeah, that because uh, most routers these days are one gigabit routers and that's that's 1000 megabit per second transfer. And I don't know if megabit or megabyte or megabit, to, which is very hard to saturate. Yeah, unless you have Google Fiber and the high end Google Fiber, the one gigabyte Google Fiber, you're going to have a hard time maxing that out. And that's even the low end routers tend to be gigabit routers. That, that's been a standard for years now. Um, get my my internet connection speed. Thanks to fucking Comcast, the best I've got is fifty megabit per second. That's fifty megabit per second. When my router can max out at one thousand megabit per second. Now that so you don't have to, you're not going to have to worry about router saturation with most broadband connections. You will, however, notice performance differences between routers. And again, we've talked about this last time, and we've talked yeah. about this before. Just about every time. Cheaper routers aren't going to perform as well. They're not going to be able to send data back and forth as well. And that's not because they're not rated high enough. It's because they're using lower quality chipsets. They don't have less enough memory. less me They don't have enough RAM built into them. That's where you're going to end up with problems on the router. Now, already using a wired connection for streaming, and that's good. That's what you need to be using because if you're using wireless, it can fluctuate based on a bird passing by or a baby's laugh across the street. That's that's the voodoo of Wi Fi. Walking by with a soda. Yeah, that's that's the voodoo of Wi Fi. Um, so always, if you're going to be streaming, always use a wired connection because otherwise. Oh, no shit can happen um but it's it's just i would definitely definitely upgrade if you're using like a 30 dollar router you're gonna want to upgrade that because that's the problem is not going to be your internet connection it's going to be the router itself is a piece of junk and you are doesn't have enough RAM to properly cache things so that it'll go from one place to another. It's 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 going to be too many people are trying to that chipset just can't handle it. That's where your problem is going to come in. So that was where I'd recommend getting a better router. Um, your internet connection that's not well unless you have a shitty internet service. Comcast. Oh no. <laughs> Unless you have a shitty internet service, that's a different thing entirely. Um, right now, even yeah, because you, you said uh, you said you were at fifty, right? Yeah, and you stream. Yeah, that yeah, I have fifty uh, down, and I think it's twenty up. I think is twenty upstream. Yeah, so so yeah, if if Nash can do it at that level, you know, as long as you have at least that much and a decent router. You yeah, you should be able to do it. Your upstream is much more important than the downstream yes. there. Because that, that, that's the number. If you can at least get a 10 megabit, uh, is it megabit or megabyte? I never get that. I think it's megabit. Yeah. They, they use megabit these days because it makes the numbers sound bigger. Yeah. If you can get, at least get a 10 megabit upstream on your internet service, you're fine. That That's all you really need. Um, But get, always go for a higher quality router just mainly because... In general, you get what you pay for. And it's I don't think if you're having a problem streaming, the routers, the internet service, unless you have shitty internet service all told, um, the internet service is not your problem. A good way to check if your router is, is the issue, 
Remove it from the equation. Disconnect the router and connect your computer directly to your modem. That way, you'll, if you stream better directly to the modem than you do connected to the router, that's when you know you need a new router. Yeah. That's, that's, that's your best way to do it. So, all right, that's, that's going to do it for, the, cool. for tonight. This, no tech issues this week. No, no, yeah, we 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 actually didn't have tech issues ourselves. Yay, we're professionals. Yeah.